All right, guys, what we got here is an old beat up low boy trailer. Uh, this is a Hearst made, um, I forget where it's at, Tennessee. I cannot think of it. Anyways, it's made down Tennessee, in Eastern Tennessee. And my, ma, uh, my dad and my grandfather purchased it new, I believe in 2002, and we have beat the crap out of it. I'd say there's probably easily 300,000 miles on this thing, if not more. We ran it and ran it and ran it, but it needs a new deck. Decks are hard out, needs new paint, needs new lights. Tires are all right, needs new fenders, needs new bearings. Jack needs looked at, needs a lot. But that's what we're gonna be doing on this thing is putting it back, I don't know if we'll sell it or if we'll keep it, but either way, it's gonna to have to be redone. So that's what we're gonna do. And we'll show you guys the process. Here's the overlook of it though. Deck's gone, uh, lights need fix. They're pushed out and don't work. Uh, these ramps have pretty much been ground down on the ends. They're gone there. I don't know if I'll change this out. I might change it from chains to the steel latch. This fender has been hammered on. I've had to push it with the pallet forks three or four times because it starts rubbing here. Right here where it's been in. Bent there. Deck's pretty much gone. I'll put this in. And then uh I have to do some stuff, ran equipment through it every now and then. Jack needs work. She's kicking pretty hard, worn out. The neck up here is super worn out. We're gonna have to do something to shim it or put a new one on it, don't know. And then the wiring is, like all trailers, toast. So, skinned up pretty good. So, that's what this is gonna be. Just a quick, not too in-depth, but a quick trailer rebuild. All right. All right, y'all, we jumped in this thing, me and dad, and busted all the boards out. Uh, best way we figured to do it is, we've tried it on other trailers, backing these screws out, but they're just so uh, ate up with rust, they end up breaking anyways, and you can't do nothing with them. So what we do is we just take, uh, I bought this pry bar from Home Depot a while back. Take this one, like from it for tearing pallets and things off of uh, joists that one and then a big pry bar and we just work together and pop them up and bust the boards off stack them all over there but the next step is i think we were gonna we were thinking about painting it but what i think i'll do is i'm just gonna put a rust converter on it um because it's really not that far gone it's actually far better shape than i thought it would be underneath as far as rust goes and then dad's gonna redo all the wiring because it's if you got a trailer you know you're always doing wiring so we're gonna fix that while we're having it and then or throw the new boards back down. And as far as getting rid of these screws, if y'all ever do it, the easiest way that I found, I tried drilling them out one time and going back to the same holes and it's impossible. So the quickest thing I do is I just break them all off with a sledgehammer. <laughs> I don't grind them down or nothing, just bust them off the sledgehammer, leave the underside in there, and then spray them with either some sort of protectant so they don't rust into the side of those holes. And that's all you can do. I've tried drilling them out. You just end up breaking a thousand drill bits. So that's where we're at now. And I'll give you an update when we're to another part. All right. All right, guys, a little update. We uh, got the bearings rebuilt. I rebuilt all the bearings. Talk about expensive for just in and outer bearings and new seals on these things. I didn't even replace the races. It was $400. That's just unreal. That's COVID time for you, or whatever you want to call it, inflation. Who knows? All kinds of things going on in the world, making it expensive. But anyways, I uh, replaced all these, the hardware in these, put new UHMW bushings in there, and then put new hardware on this, on the slip spring here, new bushing in that one, new hardware in the rear. And then on the center one, originally they had a bolt here that had a grease fitting on the end to grease it so that the metal bushing would have grease on it. But where it's in between these tires, it gets knocked off all the time. Uh, stuff just hits it. So what I did is I, I don't know if you, I should have showed it to you before I put it back on. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Up in there, I put a grease fitting on the actual bushing. So now that's getting grease. And then I added a grease fitting here on this uh, slip spring, just to help out a little bit, you know, just keep it wearing so much, because I had a little bit of wear in there, but. 
that's much tighter. And then I went ahead and adjusted the brakes on it because um, they've been, they didn't need to be replaced. They had plenty of pad left or shoe left on them, but they definitely needed to be adjusted. So went ahead and adjusted those while I was in there. Dad, we wired the whole trailer. Originally they used those, I'll show them to you in a second, but Dad rewired, he got rid of all the wire nuts and stuff that were back here. And then on this side, if you can see it, in these tubes, we ran new wire all up through there. One of these brakes didn't even have the wiring hooked up to it. It wasn't working at all, this front one here. Dad fixed that, crimped and heat shrinked new wire all on it right there. Runs up to the frame. And then you got it, he's got all new wiring. And then we ordered this, the seven wire assembly for the plug. Look at that, all brand new. And down through here, here's the old one. And as you can tell, she was beat. She's past her prime. So he's got that put in there. And then we're going to, uh, we're adding LEDs up here. So we have something on to look at and we're gonna put a switch right here in the battery box for the breakaway and put a switch in that to keep it safe so that's where we're at right now if anybody ever is looking for a cheap way to rewire a trailer and you don't want to just make your own home runs what we did is i just bought the universal five-way wiring harness for trailers at tractor supply it was actually at royal king and then we just added two wires to it for our seven way for these lights and the brakes and everything so that's what we did. Worked out pretty good. Here's their side. I already got the tires on it. Just finished greasing them up. But they're much, much more, um, uh, I don't know what the word is. Tight. Much more tight. Not as sloppy as they were. That's where we're at with this thing right now. Oh, I wanted to show y'all. So, um, originally, the way they had these things wired up is they didn't have, they didn't even, even using twist connectors. They were using these. I see them use it a lot. It's a cheap way to, without having to end splice stuff, you can just crimp on the wire and you don't have to cut into them. But there's so much corrosion on these, they almost guaranteed to short out. And every single connection to the lights on this trailer, that's what they had. So no wonder we constantly had wiring issues on this thing. But that's no longer gone. They're all crimped and heat shrinked and we shouldn't have issues for, you know, six months and then we'll have issues. <laughs> But that's where we're at with this thing. Um, for now, I'm going to finish putting these fenders on. Oh, I didn't show you all that. I got these bent, brand new steel. Got them bent, ready to be welded on. They're dropped about, I cut them with the trailer off. Which I don't remember if I talked about it or not, but I dropped this down three inches lower because they were just too high and we bent them. But I'm gonna reinforce them with some angle iron that way we can pretty much stack stuff on it and it shouldn't bend into the back of the tire. Because what was happening, and it happens a lot with this thing, is it's supposed to haul equipment and then it ends up hauling stuff it's not supposed to haul or equipment's too big or it hauls round bells. And they get stacked on it and this gets pushed over and starts rubbing on this. And you can see right there where the tires are rubbed around. It's happened quite a bit on this trailer. So I'm going to use this angle on here to try to stiffen this fender up some so you can pretty much just stack on it and it won't give. So that's where we're at. Then after that, I'm going to power wash it. And then I'm going to put some rust uh, converter on it on the other carriage or underside of it. And then we'll paint the outside of it and be done. And she should be good for maybe another 20 years. That's how long she's been now. So that's where we're at. I'll give you an update when, you know, something else is important or another big step all right all right guys i'm working on the uh the hitch on the gooseneck part and this slides out so you can adjust it to different truck heights but what's happened over time is it's just slowly worn away because what you do is you set it with these now some over here i'll show you here so it slides up in this and then you know you set set it with these bolts and this pin sets your height and locks it in but what's happened is is it it's loosened up and, you know, just worn over time from the start and stopping and it's got slop in there. So what I did is I cut these little strips of the UH&W. They're just a 16th thick 
do a chinobia piece and then I rivet them in and then sand the rivets down so that they feel a little better and then I sand this edge so try to help slide in there because it's going to be tight. I wanted to do them all four but I could only I think it's only going to fit on one on each side and I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal if it's a slightly off of center. I don't think it'll matter that much. I did that and I think next let me show you see how this holes wallered out and slid down from where it's sitting there. I'm going to try to weld this up so it's round again. And then that might tighten up some. The reason I'm doing this is because when you're driving on this thing, if you go across a, like it's really a, a big hump or something when you're pulling through a field or anything, and it makes this crazy loud popping noise. And it scares you. It's nothing. It's just this thing moving, but it, it makes you worry you've done something. So I'd like to get rid of that so I can quit looking back there and try to figure out what that was. That's what I'm doing right now. I'll show you if it works. Don't know if it will. Update in a minute. All right, little update for y'all. I took the uh, welder and I welded up, just built this up as much as I could, the best I could, and then I uh, marked out, took a hole saw and marked it out. And then I took the die grinder and tried to put it back as much as I could. It's not perfect, but hopefully that's tighter than what it was before it was welded out. And then, let me show you all this. I'll try to flip this over. I welded up where these have been, the set bolts have been sitting in against this and flushed it back out where it's not dug in so much. And then ground her back smooth. I did that on both of these. So that's where we're at on that thing. I'm gonna throw it back up in there and see if I can get this to fit in. It's gonna be tight, but that's what I want. Um, as far as adjustability goes, you probably won't be able to adjust it as easy as you could before, but we don't ever move it. It's been sitting like that for 20 years, unless we don't track our trucks up. They're almost all the same height. Right now, we got three different pickups we usually pull with, and they hooked all three of them easy. So I'm not worried about adjustability. So that's where we're at with this. Let's get it up to it. All right, guys, update time. Well, I pulled her out, pressure washer, got her cleaned up. Pressure washer, everything. It's real clean now. Got all the stuff beat off. Um, Dad started painting. We're just gonna brush it on this one because we don't make a huge mesh in garage. We don't want to tape off, and it's gonna say paint. And that's just what we're doing. I don't know if it's the best way, but that's what we're doing. So he started painting this front here, and then I've got the fenders, both sides welded up, put on. I'm not a welder. Welds aren't great, but she's on there. I'm not gonna zoom in on my welds because I don't want people looking at them. <laughs> but, that's uh that's what we done and then i put this here and i also put a second piece of strapping in the back up through there um just to try to keep it from folding up as much as the last one did so we got that on there that fender's done it's a uh, really clean once you pressure washed it the hardly any rust it's just mostly surface rust she's pretty clean Got this one. I uh, actually took a piece of the fender over there and cut it out of the old top and welded it back in here because that one was pretty much rusted through. But that's the only one I'm going to do it on because every time I weld it would just eat through. It was a pain and I just don't think it's worth it. I don't, so we tried it. That's all I'm going to do. But this one's on. But Dad's come along with painting. I'm done welding. I'll start helping him paint and then we'll throw a deck on it. That's where we're at with it. She's coming along. All right, y'all. See you on the next one. All right, guys, time kind of got away from us and uh, we had to get this thing out and we, um, I didn't film the end of it, but um, we finished her up. We got a couple things we gotta come back and redo on her, but we finished this trailer up and it's honestly been about six months, maybe a little less since we did this project and we've been using her, but there she is. Got the name on there, she's all painted up. Got the stickers put back on there. Um, the way that these boards landed up, like you can see this one's bowed up, the, those screws actually went in there whenever <laughs> we did it. So I gotta, I gotta screw that one back down and then we ran out of screws on this one and we didn't put any in there and we probably put close to a thousand miles on her this summer, if not more running around, actually probably definitely more. So that's kind of the way the farming life goes though. So we got into it and didn't really finish it but this way she looks the fenders worked out good 
um, I had a sack, I forget what it was, but I put something on here. They definitely are much more rigid than they were before. They don't bend out as easy. Um, with all the new bushings and the uh, equalizers, it's just been running a lot better. So we'll get a few more years out of her by taking care of her. So this project's all finished up. But that's it. This is the final project, our video for her. And we'll keep on using her. We need to fix those boards. And that's about it for this one. All right. Well, that's the end of this product. See y'all next one.